Welcome to Coding After Work stream. And as per usual, we want to thank our sponsors before we start. Uh, Progress Telerik, you will probably know by now that they have amazing Blazor UI components. They do. Over 75, I think, the last time we count counted. The, Might be more. The biggest Blazor suit on the market. There you go. And we will, of course, add a link in the chat. But now, let's bring in our guest. Let's do that. Hello. Welcome, Martin Sigmund. Hello, hello. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for joining us. How are you? Great. I'm doing great. It's a nice day today in Czech Republic, so I'm happy to join oh. you. That's nice. We have snow. <laughs> oh, we had we spring. <laughs> we, we had spring, but today we had a little bit of snow. It's not sticking, but it hmm. still sucks. <laughs> well, it, it has advantages as well. You can go ski. So. No, it doesn't stick. It's just slush. Oh, I, I see. <laughs> Mm. Is it just April? Yeah, <laughs> it's really, really cold rain. That's what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, ah, basically, <laughs> that looks white <laughs> before it hits ground. <laughs> Why That's do we always ideal. keep up? <laughs> we always end up talking about the weather. I think it's me. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I have an obsession. I think. So I've been super excited about this uh, stream because yes. Uno is one of the platforms that I really want to use, but never actually sat down and made something. Mm -hmm. So well, you are the Windows tough. developer, right? Mm -hmm. So for you, starting with Uno platform should be very easy because it's it's Windows development, but everywhere. So that's that's the basic promise of Uno platform. I that's think that's. And uh, what does everywhere mean? Uh, literally everywhere. So, so IoT? Means your Windows application run, can run on mobile, like mm -hmm. Android, iOS. Uh, it can run on IoT based on Linux. So it can run on, a, uh, for example, a Raspberry Pi. Uh, it can run on macOS as a desktop application, on Linux as a desktop application. It can also run on the web uh, via WebAssembly. So it's truly universal. And nice. You know, with one single code base, you can reach all of these devices at once. Cool. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously, you do. <laughs> uh, right. So, so, do you want do you want us to share your screen? Yeah, maybe I can sure. I can show you some. Um, I will start by introducing Uno Platform as a general thing, like because we we usually start with. Uh, so, uh, with mobile development, we always start, or, but in general, application development. We want to reach as many users as possible, right? So we have all these platforms that we want to reach. And for each of those platforms, you have a different way of coding. So for example, on Windows, you use C Sharp and XAML to build Windows applications. On Android, you have Kotlin and AXML. Uh, on iOS, Swift and Swift UI. On the web, you have uh, JavaScript for the code and HTML and CSS for the UI. So it's all of these have different approaches. And if you actually want to build an application that reaches all the users, uh, you would need like four teams of developers, each proficient <laughs> in API. So it's very costly. And uh, it for a simple application, you would need a big team of developers. And you would have to keep them, because uh, when you want to add a new feature, you have to mm. implement it again on all platforms. When you have a bug, you have to fix it everywhere or also fix platform-specific bugs. So it's it's a lot of work and a uh, little gain because you get one application uh, and you have to write the same thing four times. So that's definitely not the ideal solution. And no, and you would never get Jimmy to do JavaScript well. Exactly, yes. Yep. Many people, especially with the JavaScript part, uh, <laughs> I think <laughs> there are many people who would be object to it. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's not the ideal solution. And uh, you can improve upon that by sharing some code, of course. And uh, the first step you can do is to share business logic. So in this case, I have uh, an example of uh, C Sharp as the business logic code uh, or business logic language. And then we have 
for the UI, we have XAML, XML, Swift UI, and HTML and CSS. So you use one single language for the logic, and then uh, each presentation layer has its own approach again. So, and that's uh, what we can do when we write UWP, Xamarin iOS, Xamarin Android, and Blazor for the WebAssembly part. So in this case, we really, literally cut down the business logic uh, side of things to one single language, one single code, and definitely improved upon things. Yeah, so, so that's much better, but not still the ideal solution because we still have to have people who are proficient in writing UI for each of the platforms. And again, with the web uh, CSS, <laughs> It's it's complicated. <laughs> <laughs> for some people. <laughs> yes, definitely for, some people. <laughs> for me. <laughs> so yeah, how can we improve or not upon that is going step forward. Uh, as an example, I have this uh, Zamar Informs or Maui, as it's going to be called in the future. And Zamar Informs uh, was a first solution in the .NET world that brought you one single code base that reaches. Uh, multiple platforms, including the UI layer. So it uses XAML as uh, the XAML that's based upon XAML in WPF and Silverlight, uh, but it brings its own custom dialect, which is a little bit simplified and has uh, a little bit different naming conventions. Uh, for example, with request, background color instead of background and so on. It's, it's a little bit different, but also a little bit familiar to developers coming from the Windows world. And that's and always it, nice. You don't have to relearn a lot. Of exactly, stuff. Yeah. exactly. Yeah, it saves you a lot of time. So yeah. uh, if you have something that you're familiar with, just learn a bit more and uh, you can use it. So that's, that's definitely mm -hmm. a nice thing to have. And uh, as a result, you again, you can write applications that run on multiple different, different uh, platforms without writing any platform specific code. And uh, for example, I have this uh, picture of uh, free uh, of one single application running on multiple different devices. So it's iOS, Android device, and Windows Phone, long live. We remember um, Windows, yeah. Windows Phone. We are still sad. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Years what? after, and we're still sad. <laughs> yeah. It was beautiful. So, yeah. yeah. yeah we, but, but we have to remember, because if we remember enough, maybe it's going to come back. <laughs> yeah, who knows? <laughs> yeah, who One knows? Day maybe Apple would will in why invent in, invent <laughs> invite invent Windows Phone. You That's never true. Know. You never know. That's true. You never know. I, I've seen tiles. the tiles. Then yeah. I will uh, actually <laughs> tiles are already there. <laughs> tiles are already there. They have the widgets and they look like tiles. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly the same thing. And on Monday, I saw the keynote and uh, they br brought in colors into macOS and so on. So I just remembered the color Lumia uh, phones and so on. Yeah, yeah that was right. a big thing when we got the accent color. And as a developer, you could jack into that. Right. Oh, the mm. memories. <laughs> yeah, font memories. Yeah. Hopefully it's gonna come back one day. We yeah, still hope. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So yeah, so so that's that's an example of how how summer informs application looks. And as you can see, uh, on each of the platforms, it looks uh, kind of familiar to the platform that it's running on. So iOS, mm. it looks like iOS application because the, the buttons are iOS C and so on. On Android again, Android de design. I'm not sure which version right now, but it's uh, Android. And on Windows, it's Windows. So uh, by using Xamarin Informs, you get this platform-specific look and feel uh, out of the box, which and is great. That is, yeah, that's amazing. Because if you design your own application and release them on all three platforms, the likelihood of <laughs> that you will actually put in the time and effort to change that is not that big. But yeah. the win you will get to actually get the user to get the ha to have the feeling of a native app mm -hmm. that is the benefit of that is so great. So yeah, I it's love big. it. It's definitely yeah. big, and uh, users will be grateful because they mm -hmm. will uh, have the feel of uh, familiarity there. That's yeah, exactly. that's definitely good. I uh, mean, but 
if we go back to the Windows Phone uh -huh. era, there was a lot of applications that were made for iPhone and Android. And uh -huh. they didn't really, I felt like they didn't care about me as a Windows user, Windows Phone user, because there was still a back button in the, uh, in the UI. Mm -hmm. But I have a back button on my physical phone. Exactly. So I knew that they just want to make money or whatever it is. But I mean, I'm bitter. So <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, that may, helps. Uh, but maybe it makes it was all just, the difference. Yeah, maybe it was just a website that was wrapped as an application. That's also yeah, who never very know. likely. In many cases, <laughs> it was. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's definitely an important thing to note that you want to make sure that all the users have the right feel and uh, yeah. have the right um, approach to the application that uh, you they expect to have. Hmm. But there's also like a flip side. The box. Yeah, yeah, there's also a flip side that uh, when you want to customize the look of the application and want to have it like branded to your uh, company to have your company colors and uh, to have like your company branding coming out of it. You can see that it's not really easy to do because on each of the platforms, it looks completely different. And uh, uh, even getting the colors right would mm. cost you a lot of work. So that's the flip side of this whole thing that uh, to actually customize the Xamarin Forms application to uh, look the same or uh, have the same branding on all the platforms, you have to do a lot of work additional to what you would do if you just wrote a native application on each of the platforms. Hmm. But it could uh, be it could be worth it. I mean, you don't have to do three identical applications. You just have to, like you said, lift in the colors and the logos. And if you look at Skype, they look completely different, but also the same on the different platforms. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Like you can do it, but uh, the problem here, in case of Xamarin Forms Maui, uh, is that the controls inside of the platform are always uh, using the lowest common denominator of of ah, all the platforms. So, for example, if you wanted to have an image inside of a button, uh, you cannot easily do that. Well, maybe they, some newer versions added this feature, but. Uh, uh, if you wanted, for example, have background of the button as a image, so image button basically, uh, that would be hard to do because there's mm -hmm. there's just text in those buttons because all platforms share the feature that they can have text inside of them. But having any custom content is a bit uh, stretch because it's not mm. available everywhere. So uh, that's a problem that you have yeah. to solve. And in case of summer forms, you would uh, then go and write your custom renderer for each of the platforms. And that means you have to know the native uh, native APIs. You have to know mm. what uh, the capabilities are there. And it's a lot of work uh, that you have to do in addition to what you would have to. Mm. So that's, that's a bit of a problem. But Zamar Informs team has uh, adjusted for this a little bit. They brought in uh, Zamar Informs shell and material design. So you can now uh, adjust the application to look and feel the same on all platforms. So in this case, we have Android and iOS. Uh, actually, Windows is supported, but only partially. So uh, the priority is always iOS and Android, and Windows is coming later. So that's uh, also a disadvantage that you don't have the first part, uh, like uh, I would say, uh, so first priority for Windows developers. But uh, as you can see, the, the application now looks much more similar on both platforms, while still have having a little bit uh, the native feel. But it's looking the same on both platforms, and it, the branding is also introduced there. So that's a step forward. Definitely. Uh, uh, the problem here that we introduced by using uh, Maui uh, is that we have now three platforms targeting C Sharp and XAML. Uh, that's fine on Windows, iOS, and Android. But we've lost the web components. Mm -hmm. So now we don't, don't have a way to easily share the code on the web. We, we could make some business logic shared with a Blazor, but uh, we don't have the UI shared. So 
uh, yeah, that's that's a complication, and that's not easily solvable right now because uh, there is no uh, support for WebAssembly currently in Xamarin Forms. So how do we uh, move from here to something even better? And the answer would be Uno Platform. So Uno Platform is a uh, solution that allows you to write a single code base solution that targets all platforms. And uh, you just write your code in C Sharp and XAML, and it just runs everywhere. Uh, that's including the web part. So now you can target not only mobile and desktop, but also the web. And Uno platform itself is free and open source. So you can not only use it for free in your uh, production applications, but also contribute. And you can also raise issues and get uh, support from the team. So it's a very agile and very fast moving platform. And it's, and the goal of the platform is to keep up with the new UI, which is a, a framework built by Microsoft, which is targeting Windows. So the goal is that you would be able to take a Windows VNUI application, uh, port it to Uno platform by basically adding the platform targets, and it would just run everywhere without you changing any single line of code. And that's uh, that's the ideal solution, of course, because you can take your existing application and bring it everywhere without learning anything new and without uh, doing additional work. That's fantastic. So, yeah, it sounds almost too good to be true. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. That's why I thought it's at the beginning as well, but uh, they convinced me. So, <laughs> so that's 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 uh, that's the promise of Uno platform to write single code base. It runs everywhere, and you don't have to learn anything new. That's nice. And how does it do that? Is that um, I'm not sure if you can see my mouse. Can you see my mouse? We can. See we it. can see it. Yep. Good. So uh, on Windows, we have just Windows development. We have VNUI, which is built by Microsoft, and it's targeting Windows and it's running directly on top of uh, VNUI. There is no Uno platform there. But on the other platforms, we have instead of VNUI, this, on the same level, we have Uno platform, which is providing the same APIs, just targeting the different platforms. So on the web, mm -hmm. it's providing uh, implementation for the web. There's, it's rendering using HTML and CSS, and the logic is written in C Sharp and running in WebAssembly using Mono. On macOS and iOS, it's again running on Xamarin iOS and Xamarin, Xamarin macOS and rendered using the native uh, rendering capabilities on iOS and macOS. And the same thing on Android and on Linux, it's running on top of Skia Sharp. Which is a native, uh, well, I should say, a native rendering library, library built by Microsoft, and it's basically rendering the UI that that Uno platform generates and drawing it on a hardware accelerated canvas. So on all platforms, you get the same look and feel using just one single code base. Cool. Yes, and. Yeah, so there's, here's an example on how, how, how the rendering actually happens. On Windows, you have UI. There is no Uno there. Just, uh, uh, for example, it's included in this, in this diagram. But on, on iOS, it's using UIKit, which is the native rendering there. On macOS, it's using AppKit. On Android, it's using Android Views. On web, it's using HTML5 and CSS. And on Linux, it's using Skia Sharp. And the point here is that it's not using the native controls like Xamarin Forms is, for example, when you use Uno platform button, it's not a Android button, it's not a iOS button. It's a natively rendered button that allows you to actually do anything on that given platform. Hmm. Not only those things that are limiting uh, by the lowest common denominator, but you can do anything because you're in full control on how of, of how the given control looks. So that's that's the point I was trying to make. That uh, that's the difference between Xamarin Forms, which you, which is using native controls directly, and Uno Platform, which is uh, rendering using native capabilities, mm. but you uh, rendering custom controls instead. 
That's cool. We got a question if uh, yes. Skia isn't built by Google and not Microsoft. Oh, uh, I maybe I have <laughs> misspoke, but... <laughs> Skia it's built by one of the giants. <laughs> Skia Sharp is built by Microsoft. Uh, oh, Skia yeah, is but built Skia by might Google. be Google. Yeah. Oh, right, if that right. makes sense. Yeah, yeah. There yeah, we go. Like Uno Platform is built upon Skia Sharp, which is using Skia. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> so it's complicated. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And so <laughs> Skia is the is the backbone of Skia Sharp, which is built by Microsoft and uh, allows you to use Skia, which is built by Google, everywhere <laughs> using. Yeah, uh, that makes sense. That was a great question. Yeah, it was. It was, and I and yeah, especially I because I that. learned something. <laughs> <laughs> I have to remember to mention that next time because it's <laughs> that's important to know. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So so yeah. Uh, this is how it works. And uh, just to explain to you how it can actually go and use the same single code base everywhere. Uh, here's an example of how, how it works in practice. So we have in Windows you have uh, Windows UI XAML controls button as a class, and in our platform there is the same class in the same namespace. So if you just swap uh, the WinUI layer uh, for Uno platform layer, you get the same functionality, basically. Hmm. Your code doesn't have to change because all the APIs are there. And you just swap uh, the implementation itself. So, so that's, that's how it works. And that's, so, so it's basically, uh, on Windows, you use Windows directly. And on other platforms, Uno platform is providing the same functionality and the same uh, role as WinUI on Windows. Hmm. Very familiar for Windows developers, I would say. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Since yeah. the same. <laughs> I know those namespaces. <laughs> <laughs> right? So so that's, uh, that means you can basically just start writing your Windows application and bring it to Uno platform very quickly without learning anything new. And that's uh, very advantageous for Windows developers. Mm or developers coming from a WPF background, for example. Not, not, it doesn't have to be UWP. It can be WPF because uh, it's just a little bit different namespace, but the names of the things like button, border, grid, mm. and stack panel, it's all the same. So you just come in, write your XAML, and it runs. And that's, that's great. nice. How different is it from Flutter? From Flutter? Uh, Flutter is uh, rendering using Skia Sharp. If I uh, if I'm not uh, oh there there are multiple different ways uh, Flutter can render. Uh, Flutter can render using Skia Sharp, similarly to Uno Platform on Linux, uh, but also using native rendering capabilities like Uno Platform does. The difference here is that Flutter is uh, not .NET based. So for .NET developers, it's much easier, and much more familiar to use Uno Platform. And also, Flutter is has its own uh, like API surface. You have to learn something new. Instead mm -hmm. of here, you don't have to if you're a Windows developer. And if you're familiar with the, the way .NET things work, it's more familiar for you to just go with Uno Platform instead of Flutter, which uh, has different uh, conventions, different approaches. So. Mm. So they're very similar, but if you're a Windows developer, it's easier to get started with Uno. Yes, I would say so. Like for .NET developers, it's it's easier to use Uno platform instead of uh, Flutter. Yeah. But the approach is basically the same. And uh, uh, yeah, I'm not sure if the if Flutter can target the same platforms as Uno platform. Uh, I I haven't been up to date with what Flutter does currently, so. <laughs> I cannot confirm or deny that. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good good way to answer. <laughs> but but basically, if you're a C sharp developer, this is going to be way easier. I think Flutter is Dart, right? Is that yes, one? that's Dart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dart. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like both are great. So <laughs> I'm not saying you should take take this one or this one. But uh, no. you know, you you should take what what's more familiar to you or mm. what's more. What's, what's easier for, to use for you? That's definitely yeah. the best answer every time when you're mm. choosing a technology to work with. <laughs> Yet we end up not always doing that. <laughs> the answer is always, it depends. <laughs> the answer for you is always not JavaScript. Yeah. Yeah. 
Downstairs well. always. <laughs> <laughs> At least for you. <laughs> All right. So so maybe maybe we can actually make some demo here. Yes. So please. we can see actually how the thing works in action. So Show let's... me the code. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, I will just turn off this because I'm ah that should be better. Okay, so I will open Visual Studio as the starting point for every .NET developer, and uh, I will do one thing first before I create a new project. I will go here in extensions and show you how to actually install Uno platform because by default it's not installed, and you have to install it with this. Uh, Manage extensions window. So you search for Uno platform, and you will get Uno platform solution templates. And that's basically uh, an extension that installs a set of templates that you can use to actually create Uno platform applications. Uh, like it doesn't install much uh, what we wouldn't have if you didn't install the extension. Um, although it includes, uh, for example, Uno platform hot reload which allows you to actually edit applications on at runtime and to see your changes in uh, in a running application on the device or on the web. So it's worth installing it, but it's not uh, like tied to it. You can still build your application even though you don't have, don't have it installed. Uh, and that's great because even if you have a uh, Azure DevOps pipeline that builds your application, you can build your application there without installing anything uh, additional over what's there already. So uh, let's go and create a new project. So I will search for Uno platform just to show you what are the options. There are two templates. Uh, one is a cross-platform application. That's an application template. And the second one is cross-platform library, which is a just a library for 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 you to build additional uh, functionality. For example, if you want to build in a library uh, of uh, shared functionality for your multiple applications, you will create a library, then publish it on NuGet and reuse it in your Uno platform applications. Can, uh, can I still use yeah. like .NET standards NuGet packages in this, uh, or does it have to be something Uno specific? Uh, you can definitely use uh, .NET standards, .NET standards packages, and everything that works with .NET Standard 2.0 works in Uno platform. Uh, the only catch is that if you want to use uh, some Uno platform specific things, like a button in your library, then you would have to have uh, the reference to Uno platform NuGet package, plus uh, to have the proper targeting of the, uh, the the library, for example, on Android. So it builds for Android on uh, on uh, Windows, build, builds for Windows and so on. So that's the only reason why you would have to, uh, why, why starting with the cross-platform library is easier than uh, having your just, just uh, .NET standard library, because then, then you would have to do these things manually. Right. That makes sense. Yes. So uh, I can start creating the application. I will say hello, you know, and put it somewhere like here. So let's do it like this. Uh, I always recommend to have the path to your project as short as possible because you can run into issues because Windows is uh, still windows <laughs> in some <laughs> some cases <laughs> and uh, there are issues with uh, long paths in some edge cases we're trying to like make sure it doesn't happen or you get uh, some proper error when you actually hit those issues but it tends to happen sometimes too so as short as possible is always a safer way to go right so uh, here's an um i use a default welcome uh documentation, some, some basic issues that you can um, encounter when starting, but I will not use that for now. You can read through, that, read through that when you create your project. And I will focus on the solution explorer, where we have a solution uh, where, which contains a shared project, 
which is which is your shared code between all the platforms. And this is the project where you will spend the most time in. Uh, there is XAML code. There are some shared assets, some shared resources, and most of your code will go here. Then there are platform projects, and those are specific to each of the platforms. So there's Droid project, iOS, macOS, GTK for Linux. There is Tizen. There is WPF for all the versions of Windows. There is UWP for Windows 10 and WebAssembly for WebAssembly. So always so you can run it on your watch. Yes. Because I think he said Possibly. Tyson. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, that's that's right. <laughs> that's right. And uh, Tyson can <laughs> even run on uh, refrigerators, so you can run it on refrigerators. Yeah, we need to get one smart refrigerator first. <laughs> so if you just could finish the stream, I'm, I'm just gonna go. <laughs> Where's my watch? <laughs> There are no limits to what you can do when, <laughs> when your application runs on refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so all the platforms that are supported are here. And uh, the, the code in those projects is very, very short. Like for Windows, there is nothing, basically, just some images. Uh, on WebAssembly, for example, there is program CS, some CSS classes, some uh, JavaScript code, which you don't have to write. Uh, this is... <laughs> Is application manifest just for having your nice uh, application name and providing splash screen image and so on. And uh, there is a program class that basically just starts the Windows application here. And the same thing is everywhere. So Android, you have just main activity, which launches the Windows application. On iOS, you have main, which uh, launches UI application, but here is the uh, type of the custom application that you are using to so hello uno.app. And everywhere, just the most important bootstrap code that's necessary to get that platform running. And the rest of the functionality is in the shared project. When do I want to add code or anything in the not shared project? Um, the I, I would think I would say that the, the only reason why would you do that specifically is to get some platform specific specific functionality. For example, iOS, on iOS, if you wanted to set up uh, deep linking in your application, you would have to go into info app uh, plist and go into uh, capabilities or advanced. I'm not sure. Maybe in entitlements. There is some associated domains. So you can add your domains there, like set up some configuration, maybe mm. uh, set up some very custom specific platform specific things. Uh, but ideally, most of your code will go into the shared project. And even in the shared project, you can write platform specific code, which I can show you just uh, briefly when you create a class and you want it to target only Android, you would just do something like this. So if Android, and once you do this, this class will be available only on Android. Mm. Not only that, you can use uh, Android specific things in here. So you can go like, hello, and then use, for example, what's something very Android typical uh, activity. <laughs> that <would> be, <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, Android app activity, and you can do some like uh, context or something like that. I'm not sure uh, what's there, but uh, yeah. So so you can uh, you can write platform specific code in the shared project by using these pound if statements and then targeting a specific platform instead of uh, writing a shared code. So that's the approach I would take for writing platform specific code because you can still have it in the in the shared shared uh, shared project. And you can then maybe do something like this. So you would have a class one Android, then you would write one for iOS, one for WebAssembly, and you would have the same class everywhere, but implemented differently for specific mm -hmm. platforms. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so for platform specific code, you would write like this. Okay. But ideally, I would want to stay in the platform agnostic manner. And 
In that case, you would write XAML and C Sharp directly like this. So we have a main page XAML, which is a classic UWP page. So we have grid, we have text block, which is which is a hello world. And I maybe I'm gonna I'm gonna start the application just to see what it uh, currently does, which is very breathtaking, and it's gonna be saying hello world, which is completely <laughs> mind blowing. <laughs> Very original. Yeah, it is. So let's see what it has. Oh, very beautiful. There I think you it's, go. It's a beautiful application. And it does exactly what it says. So it says hello world. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this is very basic. I'm maybe going to do something more advanced just to uh, show the capabilities. So maybe I will do this. I'm not sure if, oh. That's going to be very small. <laughs> uh, but we can try. Uh, so, so let's see. Uh, I will do slider, which is a very typical thing. Uh, one thing that's very important, uh, as you can see, I have these squiggles here. Mm -hmm. And that's because I'm targeting Android right now. And it doesn't give me proper intelligence. I have to switch mm. to UWP to have the proper intelligence for UWP because on Android, mm. the XAML is not really implemented uh, by default. Mm. That's going to be, be better in future versions of uh, Visual Studio. This is the stable one, but in the preview versions, uh, this is now working properly. So you can write XAML mm. and it gives you un uh, intelligence even though you're not, uh, you didn't select the right target there. So uh, I have the slider, which is named slider, the original. So we have slider here. And maybe I will do spec panel instead. Adding, so it's nicer. Right. And uh, now we have X block, which will use data binding. So use element and slider and path value. So this text block will be bound to the value of the slider. So if I slide, the number changes. Nice. It's a very simple application, but interactive. So it can actually show that it's not just an image or something like <laughs> that. <laughs> and that you can actually yeah. use the application like this. All right, so that's Windows. Very nice. On Windows, it doesn't use Uno platform at all. So it's uh, not that spe special. But <laughs> now we can actually go into the other platforms to see what happens there. And it's going to be more interesting. So let's do Android first. Uh, I will run it on emulator. And we'll have to wait because Android is always slow. So if you have any questions or something, <laughs> like that, <laughs> we have time now, like half an hour maybe. <laughs> It's not that slow. Come nah. on. <laughs> Just 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, 10 minutes is more appropriate. So if you would like to do the same thing that you, you're going to, uh, perhaps you're going to show it later, I don't know. But uh, if you want to do this for iOS, do I need iOS. a Mac? Mm -hmm. You, um, that's a hard <laughs> question to answer. Uh, well, <laughs> yes and no. So for convenience sake, it's definitely better to have a Mac at hand mm. because you can just uh, connect it via Wi-Fi with your device and deploy from there and show your simulator even on Windows. It's very helpful to have Mac instead of uh, having just Windows. If you have just Windows, uh, you can use a new feature that's uh, called Hot Restart. Uh, how do we start? That's uh, created by Zamarin for iOS. And in that case, you can actually connect your iPhone or iPad to your Windows PC, install uh, iTunes, and then run your application on, on the iPhone. Mm. Uh, the documentation says it's working only with Xamarin Forms, but actually it can work with Uno platform as well. Uh, you just have to do some additional uh, configuration there, but it works. So if you don't have a uh, Mac, you can still make it work. Uh, but I think you require you need to have the developer account credentials. Mm. So yeah. 
you mm -hmm. still have to pay for for the developer account on on iOS. Yeah. So that's that. Uh, like documentation for this is available on Uno platform uh, docs as well. So you can search for Hot Restart, and it should give you uh, guidance how to install it, how to get it running on Windows. Nice, cool. For Mac, you don't have other choice than uh, getting Mac because yeah. <laughs> there's no way to emulate Mac on Windows yet. Who knows? No, so, <laughs> uh, yeah, you can now run Linux on Windows, so That's it's not far-fetched, mm -hmm. really. So, uh, yes, so so for uh, for here we have uh, Android now. So uh, you can see that this application runs and looks the same on, as on Windows and it behaves the same as on Windows, like the, the updating of the text block is working. And we didn't write any platform-specific code, which is great. Also, for free, we get the automatic relayouting. So if I rotate the display, it relayouts and uh, changes sizes of everything automatically. So that's, that's cool. Nice. And also cool is if I do this and switch to dark theme, the application automatically changed to dark theme. And that's that you get automatically out of the box for free and you don't have to do anything additional to what you hmm. would do in the windows so it just it just supports light and dark theme automatically you like that uh, i'm wondering <laughs> can i remove the light theme <laughs> altogether yes you can force yes, you it can. to be dark skin dark theme. you definitely can do that and you can do this in app xaml and it works across <laughs> all platforms so you can go like requested theme light oh sorry dark dark Oh, there you we will go. so do this. And that's it. You don't have light theme anymore. <laughs> it just happens that we just got a car that has Android Automotive. And yes. So it's going to be dark. <laughs> I'm driving the car. I decided. <laughs> don't touch my car. <laughs> it, 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 it must have some profiles. Like you can switch who's driving. Yeah. Maybe the settings can be uh, yeah. driver yeah, specific. They, they, I think they do actually. Well, I don't have a driver's license, so, so. I'm pretty sure that uh. she's gonna drive. But... <laughs> I'm pretty sure I won't allow you to drive until you get a license. <laughs> don't mess with my car. <laughs> okay, For safety it's our sake. car. For safety you, sake. you have to develop all the applications, so it could be. Hours. So basically, we bought a house <laughs> that was the most expensive IoT project, yes. and now we have an, an, a car with ha that has Android. So it's the most the, expensive mm -hmm. Android device ever. It's fair enough. It's yeah. very true. <laughs> oh gosh, yes. <laughs> when you put it like that. <laughs> The, the well, first thing I did, we, 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 we tested the car. Uh, we were at the, the dealership, we, so we didn't drive the car at that point. So the first thing I do is I sit down, I go into settings, I start <laughs> clicking the version eight times. That doesn't work, doesn't work. And, and it shows uh, it, like uh, five more times and you're going to go into develop, developer nice. mode. Four more times, three more times, <laughs> two more times. And then it comes up with an, a message Oh, we, we don't have developer mode on the car, the car. Uh, no, uh, the demo no. car, not the demo car. No, actually, ah. we, we, I, I will probably not be able to de to deploy applications to the car Oh, OS. right. Yeah, no. They, I need to go through the yes, store. Yes, they do have a store that really? is managed by Polestar. Yes, oh, that is correct. That's, that's unnecessary. But there's probably <laughs> going to be some sort of side loading. <laughs> There must be. I will figure it out. <laughs> like it would be sad. Yeah. Yeah. Why lock it down? Daniel says that we are a little bit low. I low. think we are happy. Is it better now, Daniel? We will yeah. see when, when we are quiet afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Is it better now, Daniel? <laughs> oh, it's totally red lighting. Let's drag, drag that a little bit down. There we go. Okay. Keep I'll us switch. updated, Daniel. <laughs> okay, back to Uno. <laughs> <laughs> I will get to cars later. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right, because it was truly uh, cross-platform. Right, exactly. There you go. 
Yeah, so you can install Uno platform applications on the car. That's that's definitely possible. <laughs> and it, it, <laughs> it runs in the, in the browser, so we can run it in a, the car's browser. Uh, so WebAssembly application should run there basically normally. So why not? There yeah. we go. There we go. Yeah. All right. I, I started the build for iOS because we have time, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, iOS is very tricky. Most time, most of the time, it breaks somehow because, like, uh, updating Visual Studio is risky for uh, in, in case of iOS. It always breaks something. So, <laughs> so <laughs> I did an update, and it uh, actually didn't break this time. That's cool, and uh, it seems like it actually works. So that's a uh, that's good good news. And here we have uh, the application running on iOS. The problem here is, as you can see, it run behind the, what's this called, notch. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so it's a little bit un, uh, not really nice. I can still use it, but it's not uh, as nice as possible. And there is actually a solution for this. And I will show it to you because that's very important. So we simple bounce padding. It's the right name uh, form. Uh, we have a special uh, XAML behavior that you can use in your application to add the padding that adjusts to the notch on all platforms. So uh, you just add this in your uh, page, and it automatically the, the adjusts. The font is a little bit small. Oh, here. right. Uh, this way, this there way, better. So this yes, is the thank you. visible bounce padding padding mask. So you add this, and the application will automatically set the right padding on your page so that the content doesn't uh, get covered by the notch. Or That will help so many developers. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so like in this case, I didn't have it there, and you can see what happened. So yeah, better to have it. <laughs> and yeah, maybe, maybe this is going to be better, because it's horizontal. There is no notch there. But uh, you can see the application works. Uh, the slowness is attributed to the Wi-Fi connection between the Mac and mm. the Windows, but uh, otherwise it's smooth and fast. So, uh, and it looks the same again. So, you get the same look and feel and the same features. So, if I go to settings, no, on this settings, uh, maybe here, it's gonna be tricky. Uh, <laughs> Uh, developer is here. Dark appearance, right? Oh, yeah, to it, please, Jimmy. <laughs> right, I got to right. So we have this, and does it? Yeah, it. There uh, we so go. So it's now ah. changed into dark theme. <laughs> uh, out of the box for free. Uh, nothing else needed. So that's good. That's right. So we have iPhone here. And uh, what can I show you? What other platforms can I show you? Uh, Mac OS, I cannot show you because it's a different device. But it works the same. You have to trust me. <laughs> <laughs> but how, how is the developer experience when is this going to deploy to Mac OS and I can test it there? Uh, not really. There is no way to really uh, run debugging on Windows and uh, test on Mac. You really have to. Uh, clone your repo on Mac and uh, test it there locally. Mm. That's okay. probably the only way to go right now. Yeah. Like there are some uh, issues on uh, Xamarin to add something like remote emulator of Mac applications. So if you are interested in that, uh, upload those issues, uh, and hopefully they will add it sometime. Mm. But it's <laughs> not yet. So uh, yes, uh, the cool thing is. Uh, the iOS emulator is actually, oh, it's simulator. It's uh, remoting it into Windows. And if you have a touch screen, you can use multi-touch gestures on the iOS simulator, oh, mm -hmm. which is something you cannot do on Mac. <laughs> so, so basically. <laughs> <laughs> how, how ironic. <laughs> yeah, it's like the experience is better on Windows if you use uh, some oh, iOS. Oh, that's so interesting. Yeah. yeah? It's very fun because on on a Mac you have to use some like uh, there's some some like tool that you can uh, position those fingers, uh. so, so virtual fingers and move them. But you can just touch and it works. So maybe that's, that's an advantage. 
Points for windows. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Plus one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go to GTK. Uh, I will launch GTK here in Windows environment, but you can launch this on Linux as well because it's GTK, that's cross-platform. And you can see it's the same thing again. And it's rendered using Skia Sharp. So uh, Skia Sharp is rendering the application itself and the input and output is handled by GTK. So that's that. Again, the same thing. Windows is moving, everything is render properly and the dark theme would work, but uh, uh, not here in Windows because it doesn't react to dark theme in Windows yet. Mm. So unfortunately. So you, you have can't to just... go Linux just just now. Darn. You have to wait. But, but you can <laughs> set the requested theme in AppZamel. So you, you can huh. force it. You can force it down. There you go. It's You're fine. safe again. <laughs> Okay, so Tizen, I can choose Tizen because I don't have any Tizen uh, tools installed, but you can just run it on a Tizen emulator. And again, Tizen is running on Skia Sharp. So uh, it's mm. drawn using Skia Sharp and uh, the experience should be the same as on GTK. Would, yeah. would it be possible to run that application on my watch? Oh, I'm showing you my arm. But... <laughs> and you're not even wearing your watch. <laughs> Hey, look at my arm. Can I run but, it on my arm? <laughs> it's an arm processor. <laughs> no! Arm 64? Or... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but yeah, no. you, you can run it on, on the watch. You could, you could run it on the watch. Uh, but the padding, that would be tricky because the watch is uh, circular. Mm. So uh, that yeah. would be a little bit more work. Uh, on top of what you would normally have to do. But then again, you wouldn't want to have uh, like the scroll bar or a slider and things like that for yeah. the watch anyway. Yeah, so. that's, that's, yeah, that would require more specific uh, yeah. targeting. I, I would say that uh, having shared UI between a mobile or desktop application <laughs> and the watch. <laughs> <laughs> if it can be done. <laughs> it can be done. <laughs> But do you Maybe want not to? as practical. Yeah, no, probably not. Probably not. I mean, right. the watch you usually just use it as as um, as to setting like a setting when when you uh, turn the dial, right? Or it's a widget just to notifications. show notifications. Yeah. Yeah. To be Something honest, like I use it get, use it as a sleep alarm. That's yeah, it. that's it's an alarm clock on your yeah. arm. <laughs> Uh, I can recommend it's uh, alarm clock. No, it's an no, alarm clock. No, are you getting it? It's an alarm. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I'm sorry for all the bad puns. <laughs> this is what you get. <laughs> I started uh, I, it that way. <laughs> not sure if you know, but there is an application uh, called Sleep as Android on Android, and that is a great application if you have a smartwatch. Mm -hmm. Because this application can uh, track your sleep and actually wake you up smartly in the morning oh, yeah. so that you're not drowsy. And there is also a cool feature uh, called uh, uh, QR code. Uh, so you can print up a QR code, put it somewhere in a different room. And the application then forces you to scan the QR code in the morning uh, so that you cannot snooze your alarm. And <laughs> We need that for you. But then... I then I instantly regretted it because then it will just keep on, the alarm will just keep on going and you will sleep. And now it's a chicken race. Are yeah. you going to go up, go up first <laughs> or it's me? Give me your damn phone. <laughs> <laughs> but there are yeah. other, other versions like you can, you can do math. So you can get some, some math equations. You have to solve them. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I cannot do math in my head. And in Especially the morning. in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not in the morning. Now there are different difficulties. So we can start with like one plus one, but there are also like uh, uh, multiplication and so on. So, uh -huh. yeah. yeah, it We're sounded like a that. good idea, but it's just me <laughs> who is going to have to get his phone and go up and do that because I want to sleep. <laughs> Yeah, so, so maybe not the ideal solution for... for <laughs> but for we you. could 
<laughs> connect it and drop some water on you or something. Then I you would go like up. I like this. I like it. I, I like. I don't like it at all. <laughs> it's not included yet. You would have to request uh, as a feedback. You know, additional. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we can build something. Uh, yeah, you they... said this target IoT. Uh, we can build like... something. Yeah, but but in that in case of the Android. C plus Android, they have actually API for it, so we can build your custom plugin. There you go. Hmm? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's... And you will save time because you're already showered. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Huh? Ready for the day. <laughs> no, I think I would be probably in, in a little bit of pickle. Pick Rick. Uh, well, <laughs> uh, I'm waiting for the build anyway. So, anyone, uh, any more fun jokes on more, more links? <laughs> <laughs> more links are always fun. No, they're not. Uh, not at all. Uh, sarcastically fun. <laughs> 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 all right, we have. We have the application running now on the web. So, nice. oh, so this is the web application running on WebAssembly in the browser. Works exactly the same. And also, I uh, will go to network here. And if I refresh, you can see a lot of familiar things here, like Newtons of JSON. We have system drawing. Then we have uh, .NET. We have system XML and so on. So the basic uh, mono like uh, and uh, .NET like libraries are loaded into the browser. And after you do that, the application runs in the browser. No more uh, network requests are happening. So all this is running on the client without any network involved. So that's pretty cool because your client can have this application running offline without having any active connection to the internet and it will just work as a normal application. Hmm. And this and rem reminds me of course of Blazor. Yeah. It's this is yeah, that's the kind same of the thing. same. It, it's not based on the same technology if I understand everything correctly, but it's uh, I'm, I'm assuming this is not rendering HTML in the end. Uh, this is actually. This okay. is. Uh, you can see if I go here, we have some diff here and so on. It's it's Pure HTML and CSS. Uh, we are actually uh, thinking about using uh, Sketch Sharp as well, like an alternative to this. But having the native uh, native elements there is very advantageous for mm. accessibility. Uh, so yeah. you can actually add accessibility tags there to make sure that the application is readable for screen readers and for narrators and so on. So that's uh, that's definitely the reason why why you should use HTML instead of something that's just rendering things. Hmm. And that's that's what we're using here. So this is native HTML and CSS, but you don't have to use it. You have to have, you don't have to learn it because Uno platform is rendering it and yeah. uh, for you yeah. for you in the background. So that's that's the advantage there. What about and ahead of time compilation? I know that uh, Uno is supposed to have that or are you working on it? I don't remember. Oops, dark theme. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, uh, ahead of time, a compilation uh, works. Uh, it's a little bit more complicated to build uh, because you have to install uh, WSL on Windows. You have to install some additional tools into WSL. Uh, there is a documentation uh, page for this, so you can look it up in the Uno platform docs. Uh, but once you compile with ahead of time, your application will get a little bit bigger because it's it's native code, but it's faster, much faster to uh, to actually run. And there is also a uh, profile guided AOT where some parts of your applications are AOT, so those like hot paths in your application that require to be as performant as possible, and the other parts are JIT. So in that case, you get the best mix of performance and also smaller size of your application. So all this is supported and also evolving uh, continuously. And that's joint effort of uh, the WebAssembly standard and uh, Microsoft on 
the .NET team, they are massively working on WebAssembly improvements and also Uno platform uh, itself is improving uh, like performance there. And so, so all the layers come together and you get the best possible performance for your specific use case. All right. That's nice. So that's this. Uh, so this was a simple example of, of Uno platform in action. I didn't uh, show everything because uh, like macOS, I cannot show Dyson. Maybe WPF uh, just just for kicks, you know. Uh, we'll run it. <laughs> just because we can. Yeah, just because we can. <laughs> so, ah, right. You have to run this host application instead. So uh, WPF might be a little bit odd one because why would you run WPF <laughs> if you have Windows application there already? But if you have Windows 7, uh, this is a way to bring VNUI to older versions of Windows. Ah, uh, that so makes sense. Your application can reach, um, you reach users on older versions of Windows without mm. actually having Windows 10 installed. So yeah. Yeah, it's exactly the same thing, but the modern UI instead of the old Windows mm. uh, seven ish, uh, you uh, look and feel. That makes sense. All right, so that's that. Maybe one more thing I can show you here. Uh, the cool thing about shared project instead of having like a shared library is that you have this assets folder where you can put shared assets that are then shared across all your uh, targets, and you can put in images and other types of files. Uh, and for images, the good thing is that it automatically copies those images into the right folders on uh, mm -hmm. target platform. So if you, if you have scaled images, for example, scale for DPI 100, DPI, 2, DPI 200, and so on, it automatically adjusts to the target platform. So on Android, it will go into resources, drawable, XHDPI, and so on. So it will put those images into the right position on that given platform. So do I you... have to supply all the scales for all the platforms or will you know fix that for me? Uh, you don't have to. Uh, you, if you provide just one scale, it will uh, always fall back to this one. Uh, mm -hmm. But if you provide multiple, it will use that to your advantage to actually have a better look of your application on high DPI mm -hmm. screens. So like it's... Uh, it's better to provide more if you can, yeah, of but course. if you provide just a single one, it will work still. Just uh, yeah. maybe not as sharp everywhere as it could be. Hmm. So that's that's that. Then also, Unless I supply the highest DPI, <laughs> would well, that work? That's, that, that would work as well. Uh, yeah. Just uh, <laughs> performance hit would be maybe <laughs> not acceptable. <laughs> Like you can, you but then we can do the. <laughs> but then we can do the the um, pre compilation thingy. <laughs> <laughs> so it will run faster. So I will save some time. No. Nah. Okay, yeah. I will just apply the images then. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> you need to see where you can push <laughs> push the limits, right? <laughs> like you can push uh, mobile devices, <laughs> <laughs> but the battery will not like it. No, that's true. That's uh, true. And uh, uh, the, the last remaining thing is the strings. You can provide localization that's shared across all platforms as well. So uh, that's the last, like building part of the shared project. And with that, that would be like the basic solution example. Uh, yeah, do you have a mm -hmm. question or? Yeah, uh, so with Blazor, uh, I can build WebAssembly applications and I can access like local storage or, or whatever I whatever I need. Let's take the local storage, for example. Mm -hmm. Can Uno access those things as well? That's a great question. Great question. And uh, it actually can. And ah. mm -hmm. the thing is that uh, Blazor is just single platform. So they have local storage and that's uh, web specific. Uh, right, uh, right. It's, it's not, uh, not, not everywhere. But in Uno platform, we have uh, we use the same APIs as on Windows. So if you want to store something locally, you have application data. Is the uh, Windows implementation of the things? So yeah, using Windows storage. Uh, current there is local 
folder. And this is a folder where you can store your files, your folders. It's basically just a place in file storage where you can store things. And there's also local settings for setting, uh, settings, and so on. And this works across all platforms. And on each of those specific platforms, it uses uh, platform-specific uh, implementation. So for Android, it uses some Android settings. On iOS, it uses NS user defaults. On uh, Mac OS, there is also NS user defaults, probably. On uh, WebAssembly, it uses local storage for storing these things and so on. So you don't have to care. You just use local settings or local folder, and it works everywhere without you having to manually adjust to any specific platform. I like that I don't have to care. <laughs> The, the thing in my head is right now, are you kidding me? <laughs> That's so cool. I That's a nice that. reaction. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it depends on where you're coming from and what you're doing, of course. You don't want to put whatever stuff yeah. that's sensitive, but you wouldn't put that in local storage anyway. Oh, or of course. You sensitive shouldn't. things, you can use uh, password. Uh, vault, which is a, another API on Windows. And that works, again, cross-platform on most of platforms, excluding web, because there is no really way to store uh, mm. sensitive information on the web. So for that, you would have to do something else or you know, yeah, do it somehow platform specifically. But you know, se sensitive data doesn't really uh, play well there. So. But what would happen if I use password vault? Would that just break on the web? Uh, yeah, actually, yes. Well, let's skip it. I can show you how it will break. <laughs> so uh, for those things that are not supported everywhere, for example, Password Vault, I have to check where it's uh, located. So Windows Security Credentials. Uh, so let's see. In the source code, you have Windows Security Credentials. And we have Password Vault. And for those platforms which are not implemented, we just throw not supported exception with some uh, text or explanation why it's not supported. So at runtime, you will get an exception that explains to you why you cannot use it. Plus also, when you use it, you will get a warning at, uh, at, at its time. So thanks to a Rosalind analyzer we have, when you use an API which is not available everywhere, it will underline the API and tell you, hey, it's not working here and here and you have to do something special for these platforms. So that, that's... You uh, really want to try this now. I really yeah. want to. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, maybe if I do this, uh, I'm not sure if it's gonna pick up on the changes now, but it should underline to me <laughs> that it's not available. I'm not sure why it's not doing that. Uh, we just are sometimes confused, so maybe it's the yeah. <laughs> oh, it should work. <laughs> like in general, in general, it works. So, so it, get, it gets you to online, and you know that uh, that given platform is not working yet. Mm. So you have to adjust manually. That's good. All right. So that's uh, this. Uh, that means it, the window, uh, the Uno platform, uh, is not just UI, but also uh, non-UI things. And I will have examples mm. of that later. If uh, when we get there, it's going to be quite interesting as well, because uh, I have quite a nice demo that I want to show you later for this. OK, so oh, I don't want this. I want to continue <laughs> uh, from this slide. All right. so. Uh, Uno UI itself, the UI layer, has many features that you get out of the box. And that includes the dark and light theme and high contrast theme for uh, accessibility reasons. So you can switch on that uh, manually and you get high contrast for uh, visually impaired users. You have full control data templating and styling, which you are used to from WPF or UWP. So you can take an existing control, retemplate it, and make it look completely different than it would normally do. And you have full access to animations, visual states, and adaptive triggers, which is also nice when you want to target multiple different screen sizes on 
on mobile, on the desktop or TV, you want to have different layouts of your application and you can do that using state triggers. And you have also access to data binding, including the compiled bindings using XBind, which you can, which allow you to uh, have compile time com uh, checking of your data bindings and also better performance. And many other things, including con the conditional XAML. So if you want to display some UI specifically on a given platform, you can do this using conditional XAML. And you are in full control. So if you choose to uh, use, for example, a native control like native mapping solution on Android, you can actually do that. Just put it in your XAML, uh, cover it with uh, conditional XAML, and it will just work only on Android and not on the other platforms. So that's that's great because you you can combine native UI with Uno platform UI as well. So, and for example of this, I will open here Gallery Platform Uno, which is a, our sample application. Maybe if you can uh, share that in the chat or somewhere. Uh, this is accessible on the web. It's fully available everywhere. So you can just open this website and this is a WebAssembly application running in Uno platform, showcasing uh, the UI controls in Uno platform that you can use. And we have Fluent material here. Very soon, we will have one more uh, theme, which will be Cupertino, Cupertino UI, which is a Apple-like UI. And you can see that if I switch between the themes, it, uh, the visual, visuals of the application change. So yeah. here we have Windows. It looks like a Windows application, have the same behavior as Windows application, but in Material, it looks different. It has the ripple effect here, completely typical for Android applications. Again, works the same way as Android and has the same, same visuals. And there's a lot of examples here, like uh, different components that you can use. Slider we always uh, already saw, so a slider looks a little bit different on material than on, on Fluent. Then we have toggle switches, again, Fluent design against material design. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to write any platform specific code here. You just use material you design and it works everywhere if you want to. If you want to have uh, Windows design on Windows and material on Android, you can do that as well. It's up to you what you choose and how you mix up your application and you are always the one who is in full control. I I like I like this platform a lot from the user experience because this means that the developers who are just developing their own project and maybe not have a design team or a UX team or what have you can actually make applications that works perfectly on all platforms and look the same and mm -hmm. uh, please use this. <laughs> so now you're excited as <laughs> I, well. <laughs> I am because they are really thinking about the users. That's that's what I see. Of course, they're thinking about the developers as well because we don't have to think about things we don't want to think mm -hmm. about. But as a user, you can get the accessibility and please people use accessibility and you can get this native look and you don't yeah. have to think about it. I, yeah, I'm, a, I'm excited <laughs> about this too now. <laughs> yeah, even advanced things like animations are just working out of the box everywhere. And that's, uh, yeah. that's nice things to have. And you have also acrylic, uh, that's pretty cool. So acrylic wow. brush, so the blur effect uh, of content behind the element. And actually on Mac OS, you can actually use the acrylic brush behind the window. So you can have... Mm something behind the window and see through the window with a blur effect on, upon it. So hmm. that's pretty cool. I'm impressed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and here is a button that you can use to see uh, code examples for all these things. So oh, nice. you can use this like a reference implementation for many things. And yeah, always this button shows you. And if there's a copy button that gives you the clipboard, <laughs> yeah, clipboard copy of the whole thing. All right, so that's it from the gallery. Uh, I mentioned the Cupertino theme. You can see that it's uh, here also showcased 
uh, this looks like an iOS application. And again, you can decide that you like iOS so much that you want to have it everywhere. And you can just take the Cupertino theme and uh, bring it to Windows, Android, and uh, the web as well. Mm -hmm. So, but you can see the completely different styles for the same controls. And the cool thing here is that the controls themselves are still the same class. So you can work with it, implement things uh, in a shared way, and just swap out the style between those mm. implementations. Mm. And it I'm doesn't not the change... only one who likes it. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't change anything for you from the developer perspective, only from the UI perspective. So that's. Yeah. That's pretty powerful. Which is why I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the less less work for the developer, the better, right? Because you can uh, use that time to actually build features and improve yeah. your application. So yeah, do what you're good it? at. If you're good with UI, go all in. If you're not, <laughs> here's a solution. <laughs> <laughs> right. And you can, of course, build your own theme if you want. Yeah. If you if you just want to your, have your application look like Ubuntu application, you can just create your own library with Ubuntu styles, and it will mm. work. So why not? Okay, I have a really yes, a real edge case here. <laughs> All right, let's do it. So let's assume that I want to include a font, something font. completely different that is not available on Windows. Would that uh -huh. work in WebAssembly? Like custom font. Uh -huh. oh, so you search for fonts in a documentation, and you should find uh, fonts here. And there is a documentation how, how you can use custom fonts on every platform, mm. <laughs> so including WebAssembly. Uh, the trick is that huh. on WebAssembly, you have to use uh, CSS a little bit. Uh, so you provide your font in the, face, uh, in the version of uh, Base64 so that it's loaded before the application loads. But it just then works uh, the same on all platforms. So you just use font family like in XAML, and it works everywhere the same same way. And this can be used not only for normal fonts, but also for icon fonts, for example. Mm. So you can have uh, icons or symbols in your application. Can I wing <laughs> ding bats? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's no problem. <laughs> That's nice. Although, although that's probably uh, copyrighted, so I'm not sure if it's... Yeah, <laughs> probably. I can make my own. <laughs> yeah. No, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> so how easy is it to integrate with other APIs like Google Maps? Yeah, it's definitely possible. Like, it's additional work, and uh, it's, it's not uh, offered out of the box, for, for example, for the, for the maps. But... Uh, for example, if you want to have uh, Google Maps in uh, your application on WebAssembly, you can use uh, JavaScript. Yeah, here is a tutorial on how to embed a JavaScript component into Uno WebAssembly. Mm. And that goes through a tutorial how to do that in general for a JavaScript library, uh, specifically in this case, a uh, date picker, I think it was some custom. But then I, then I need a different version for for Windows, for instance. So this needs to be platform specific in this yes. case. Yes. In this case, you would but, have to go platform specific. Yeah. But some APIs might not, you don't, maybe don't need to do that. Uh, yes. So, some, some APIs are already implemented. So we don't have to do mm -hmm. it manually. Uh, like we have uh, Uno Maps, I think, library, which gives you Oh, that's not the right Uno Maps. <laughs> okay, uh, Uno platform maps. So yeah, map control, uh, which is unfortunately not available on WebAssembly yet. So this mm. one works for iOS and Android, but not on WebAssembly. Uh, uh, but yeah, if you want to write specific platform specific code, you can write it. If you want to reuse something that's already built uh, by someone else and it's available on multiple different platforms. So you can do it as well by embedding those native controls in your application. So hmm. you should be able to find solution for almost any, if anything. And it should be all integratable into Uno platform because it's just uh, Zamarin application underneath. So there, is, yeah. there are no limitations there. Yeah. Right? Great question. Yeah, very. 
<laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, maybe maybe I actually did uh, answer one question regarding uh, specifically uh, Google Maps recently. It's uh, here. Here it is. How do you implement Google Maps in WebAssembly? There, I made this. Uh, tutorial on this so you can use ah. this code actually <laughs> to display Uno platform uh, <laughs> google maps so and it works it's just really embedded google maps uh, in the application and you mm. can then interrupt calls from c sharp to javascript and for example change uh, center of the map or zoom in zoom out and so on it, mm. it depends on what you implement but it's definitely possible to do it you're not limited by by anything. Cool. Okay, so let's go back to the slide. Um, as I mentioned, Uno platform is not only for the UI side of things, and uh, I've shown you dark theme, for example, uh, which is a little bit UI, but uh, the application <laughs> data, local, sto local storage settings, uh, there are also things like launcher, speech recognizer, and all mm. these things are cross-platform and available for you without writing any platform-specific code. And that's pretty nice. And I actually have an example here uh, on Cutly APIs. So we can use this link to get there, cut.ly APIs. And that's a sample application I did for last year's Uno, UnoConf. <laughs> and it actually... Uh, showcases some of those uh, some of those APIs that you get available and are not really UI specific. So, for example, network information is pretty useful. Uh, imagine your application wants to do some API calls and get some data from your server, and the user turns off Wi-Fi or disconnects from the internet. You want to make sure that your application appropriately adjusts for this. For example, disables some functions or mentions to the user that there is no internet connection and so on. Mm. And to do that, you actually can use Network Information API, which is a Windows API, which is again available through Uno platform everywhere. And you just use network status changed event that gives you notification when the network changes. And as an example, I will not disconnect here because I would uh, lose you, uh, but I will... <laughs> <laughs> I will... Uh, Click observe connectivity <laughs> and fake it. So I will click offline here. That, that's a nice catch. I have seen that that happen. It happens, more than yeah. once. Yeah. <laughs> Safer not to do it. <laughs> yeah. So you can see it changed automatically when I clicked offline. And we, it now shows that I'm offline. If I switch back online to slow 3G, see 3G is fine. Hmm. It's it's connected. So this way you can actually get notifications of internet connectivity and adjust accordingly without actually writing any platform specific code, which would be mm. a waste of time. So that's an example of uh, how you can that's save time handy. by using cross-platform APIs. There's yeah. accelerometer. I cannot show it to you because I'm running on a desktop PC, but if you have a mobile <laughs> phone, open this Please website pick it there. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I have zero, zero, zero. It's, it's sitting. <laughs> sitting on the floor. But uh, on a mobile phone, it would show you the X, Y, Z coordinates mm. of the phone. Uh, the same thing for vibration. If you click this on a mobile device, it will vibrate. And uh, then the speech recognizer, which uh, doesn't really work in, in Edge yet, I think. So I will try it. Hello. Oh. <laughs> it there does you work. go. <laughs> it does work. It really works uh, once. <laughs> yeah, well, but we got, we got it once. <laughs> uh, like it's better because before it didn't work in Edge at all, uh, but in Google Chrome it works much better. So you can try it there. The API is uh, really uh, preview form, so <laughs> it's mm. not really stable too much. But uh, there is the, the coolest example I have here is MIDI. I'm not sure if you are familiar with MIDI. You would love this one. <laughs> yeah. Do you know MIDI? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so, um, yeah. I enjoy playing the piano or, or a synth or whatever, but I can't. But <laughs> I enjoy it. You're at least better than me. <laughs> 
It's also so if, for, for the, if there's someone in the chat that doesn't know MIDI, perhaps you could uh, tell us about yeah. it. Yeah, the MIDI is Musical Instrument Digital Interface, uh, which is mouthful, but uh, basically it allows you to communicate with a musical instrument and uh, get input and output from the device. And in this case, I have a digital piano behind me. I'm not sure if you can see it in the webcam here, but this is there. Yeah, I can see it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so the point is I have connected this digital piano to my PC using USB. So it's not connected, it mm -hmm. plays. And uh, I have this browser running Uno platform application and it recognized the digital piano here. It's here, that's the digital piano that I connected. And I can, I can actually play notes here on the piano. <laughs> and that's pretty cool because it's actually communicating. Uh, mm. So the, the setup is like this. We have a Windows application running in the browser using Windows APIs to communicate with, uh, via MIDI. So we're using MIDI outport like this, MIDI note on message and so on. This gets translated into JavaScript web MIDI calls. Underneath the JavaScript layer, there is a Chromium implementation of MIDI, which actually uses UWP implementation of MIDI. So it calls Windows APIs again. And those Windows APIs then uh, provide this communication with the digital piano. So it's like very much inception-like uh, solution where you go from Windows to JavaScript to Windows and to a device which is external to the browser. That's cool. That's pretty cool. Is, hmm. is it using Web MIDI in the, in, for the JavaScript part? Yes, uh -huh. Web MIDI. Web MIDI is, uh, the whole thing is implemented as Web MIDI on, on the browser, but uh, on the other platforms like Android and iOS and macOS, it's again using some uh, platform-specific uh, APIs. Mm. And you don't have to learn those because you have just Windows APIs and they, they, those work everywhere without any single change. So that's pretty cool. You don't have to learn anything yeah. new. You have one, one API and it works everywhere. That's so, nice. Yeah. So that's, that's, uh, that's probably the coolest uh, demo I have because it's, it's really <laughs> external device communicating with the browser. Uh, yeah. And yeah, that's, that's pretty nice, I think. Uh, like the web can do many things now. And uh, there are also now APIs for communicating with uh, USB devices, uh, if, if Bluetooth devices. So uh, I'm definitely looking forward to trying to implement some of those features mm. as well into Uno because why not? <laughs> Please do. <laughs> but you mentioned all the things that I love, MIDI, the USB stuff and, and Bluetooth. <laughs> That, that's basically <laughs> all the gadgets. All the gadgets, yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, you can do anything then. Like IoT scenarios, like smart home, anything. Mm -hmm. You can mm. just do it on all platforms without learning anything new. And it's just cool. Mm. That's, that's the ideal goal that we would have. And yeah. I think no other platform has this. Like MIDI, you cannot do MIDI everywhere. Like this, you can. I, I found some uh, some solution for Xamarin Android and iOS, but nothing exists currently for Xamarin iOS, Android, and uh, the web at, hmm. at the same time. Plus macOS. So this is like the most universal solution. Hmm. Okay, uh, so I want to show you one more example of an actual application running in Uno platform because we saw some small examples. It wasn't uh, like anything too advanced. So let's go with something more advanced here. And uh, something you're familiar with is calculator, mm -hmm. right? That's a classic application running on Windows. <clears throat> and Microsoft has open source this application and yes. put it on GitHub. That's, that was pretty crazy because no one expected that and it's just suddenly yeah. open source. So that was so fun. Uh, Let's find it, GitHub uh, calculator. Here we go. So that's, that's a repo, very alive, often committed to. And they open sourced this. And the Uno platform team has noticed, of course, and they, they thought, why not port this thing 
to Uno platform <laughs> because it's a Windows application and they do these things. So mm. they actually took this code and brought it to Uno platform. So now you can run the calculator <laughs> in the browser and also on mobile devices. It's available on uh, iOS store, app, uh, Google store, and so on. So you can download this application, run it on your devices. Mm. And it's uh, the full featured calculator application from Windows. Uh, in this case, it's uh, different because it's dark theme, but yeah. if I, I will switch to light theme for a while, right? Yeah. This is, if it doesn't bother you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, oh, didn't adjust properly, but I'll refresh, maybe it's gonna be okay now. So yeah, you can see that's the same thing and actually adjusts properly to the right sizing of the, the <laughs> window. So if you make it bigger, it shows the memory and history. Now it doesn't. Yeah. It has all the features like scientific and programmer. And all this, all these things are exactly the same as in the Windows calculator. So you can do conversions. So, <laughs> so 5,000 kilograms is one and a quarter of an elephant and so on. So it all works and it works everywhere. And actually on iPad, you can download this application. It's the best free calculator application that's available. <laughs> <laughs> like it on is iPhone, a good calculator. Like on iPhone, you have a calculator built in, but on iPad, there is none. So mm -hmm. why not use this? Yeah. That's interesting. And there are no ads, so it's worth it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, they so, must have had so much fun porting that over. Oh, definitely. <laughs> there is actually a, a set of articles about porting this application. Mm. I'm not sure where are they now. Uh, but Uno, it was on Medium, maybe. I'm not sure where they. Uh, maybe on the blog somewhere. But. They had actually a series of articles how they ported the application, mm. what were the required steps. Like there are some uh, C++ components that are very old <laughs> in the calculator and they had to port it. Yeah. And uh, like the easiest thing to port was the UI because that's XAML and that was just mm. out of the box working. And for <laughs> the C sharp code, because calculator is C++ based. So they had to take that C++ code and translate it into C sharp. Mm. which was a little bit more work than uh, <laughs> yeah, copy paste, but yeah, it actually works pretty well. And uh, here's an example of, uh, of it running on Linux as well. So <laughs> this is uh, in Ubuntu running uh, Uno calculator and you can download it on Ubuntu as well. There's, uh, it's available on the store. I'm not sure what's the store. <laughs> right. Snap store, snap store, so it's there. So yeah. That's example of a more complex application running in, mm. in Uno platform, but there are many others. And um, many of those applications are open source as well, like the calculator itself. Uh, there is also Channel 9 application, which is a showcase for Channel 9. Plus mm. you can contribute to it and add additional features. So here it's like viewing of, uh, of shows and you can, uh, browse them by category and so on. So it's like a uh, channel line application, again, available on all platforms. So you can contribute, add features and uh, see how it's actually implemented on the repo in in, in GitHub. So that's great. That's pretty nice too. Right, right, all right. So I'll go back to the slides quickly. It's just a few more things that I would like to show you here. So uh, as I mentioned, Uno platform builds upon WinUI as its template, basically. So all the controls that you have in WinUI, you can use in Uno platform as well. And we have uh, we are adding support for new controls over time as they are added. So now we have tree view, tab view, uh, hierarchical nav navigation view, and so on. And all these uh, controls should work the same way as in in Windows, uh, and they have all the features that you are expecting to for, uh, from Windows controls. So you can use those in your application without really doing edit and additional work. Plus, uh, there is a close cooperation between Uno Platform and the Windows Community Toolkit, which is run by Azam Lama, and. Uh, <laughs> 
this uh, toolkit uh, has a lot of other other controls like data grid and uh, progress ring and so on. All these controls are working in Moodle platform as well. Like not all of them, like there are some missing, but many of them are working. Uh, plus, we are trying to keep up with their versions. So where they are adding new things and adding, for example, new extensions, they are also working in Moodle platform uh, mm -hmm. when when the new release is out. Cool. And uh, there is also Sync Fusion. Uh, so here's an example of how Sync Fusion charts are working in Moodle platform on the web. So interactive charts to see how it all works. Uh, so basically, if we're talking about third-party control vendors, uh -huh. everything that is that is uh, SAML-based might work. Uh, yes, but they need to actually release it to support Uno platform. Like okay. uh, mm. you cannot directly use a Windows library in Uno platform because it's just Windows and it uses mm. uh, it it uses the Windows WinUI layer uh, underneath. They have to compile it with Uno platform mm. to mm. actually run it on Uno platform. But ideally, existing UWP controls should work without many changes on Uno platform everywhere. Okay. Yeah, uh, we have infra infra example here as well. Some charts, interactivity, and cool colors. Plus, we have uh, an interactive demo here, like color picker and histogram in the browser running with infrastructure's uh, chart. So that's pretty nice as well. And uh, like the, the the set of third party support is growing uh, over time. So I'm pretty sure that more uh, more vendors will support Uno platform over time. Mm. And uh, it's it's pretty good for them because it's just taking those existing Windows, Windows controls and porting them to Uno platform. And it shouldn't be that much work. So that's why I think uh, many will jump on this, especially because of the WebAssembly part, because that's, mm. that's something new and something that has a lot of promise for developers. All right, uh, here's SkiaSharp. Also, SkiaSharp uh, running in the browser is very much a thing. And you can run uh, SkiaSharp uh, simulations or uh, rendering in the browser. And the cool thing is that uh, on Skiasharp based targets of Uno platform like GTK and Tizen, you can now actually do Skiasharp in Skiasharp. So you could <laughs> put Skiasharp control in your XAML and render Skiasharp inside of Skiasharp. So it's like Inception. Yeah, it works. <laughs> Because why not? You know, why not? Yeah, That's always exactly. the question. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> like some things are very tricky. Like uh, on WebAssembly, doing the web view control. That's that's hard, really, because you have uh, to simulate a web view control inside a website is not really easy. And you can use iframe, of course, but there are some limitations. And that's uh, one of the controls that are not supported yet, for example. Hmm. Uh, we definitely want to support it, but it takes a lot of work and it's it's very tricky to get it right. So that's, that's why, for example, sense. yeah, web, web, web view is tricky. All right. And uh, the roadmap, of course, hey, more we need. There's your right watch. Ah, there's the watch, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's an example of Uno platform running on the watch. It's uh, Tizen. I didn't have any. Life example, so at least this as a <laughs> sample should work. And it's actually, uh, this is um, the Tizen emulator running on Windows showing Google mm. Platform application. Yeah, and the goal of our goal is to support more WinUI controls to get more closely uh, in sync with WinUI with new releases. Uh, there are uh, the WinUI free release, like the general release by Microsoft will be uh, at the end of this year, probably. So we are trying to make sure that we will be day one supported on WinUI 3 as well. And uh, we're trying to add new programming models, looking into MVU and so on, and also improving the tooling itself. So we can potentially build Uno platform applications, not only in Visual Studio, 
on Windows, but also in Visual Studio Code, for example. Hmm. Maybe with the designer support, or yeah, we're trying to make it as easy for uh, as possible for developers to build hmm. uh, Uno platform applications. Um, I have also this uh, fun example here uh, because uh, it was yesterday or pre-yesterday, I'm not sure. Uh, Microsoft released a new insider preview build of uh, Windows that allows you to run GUI applications on Linux subsystem. And someone actually took Windows Calculator in GTK and ran it on Windows through this uh, WSL. <laughs> so this is Windows Calculator running on Linux, running on Windows, and uh, also Windows Calculator <laughs> running on Microsoft Edge, running in Linux on Windows. So. <laughs> Because you can. Because you can. Because you can, yes. <laughs> it's pretty, pretty crazy and pretty fun because it's, you know, you know, why not when you can do it? Yeah. <laughs> so that's it. <clears throat> and uh, to just drive home the point that Uno platform runs everywhere, this is a Tesla. And here is a calculator <laughs> running calculator. <laughs> in the browser on a Tesla. <laughs> Fully and we need to get that running on the Polestar when we get it. Definitely, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> so, because we can. <laughs> because you can. And actually, you could use uh, things like GPS in there. So the geolocator, the geolocator API is available in Uno platform. So maybe you can build some navigation or mapping application in there. Uh, maybe I can have Cutly. APIs. Hey, there's an example of geolocator there as well. So you can get your position. And this will run in the browser as well. So maybe you can just take your uh, car and track its location. You know? mm -hmm. <laughs> make sure that no we, one We can it. make an app so I don't take that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's this one, what do you Excellent. call it? Exit from, from the highway that I always get wrong and we have ah. to go so far well it's road not trip, that bad it's trip. it's a 10 minute but i i do it every single time so we can do that and as soon as i close there and close left, it, left, <laughs> left. they mean the real left <laughs> the other left yes please make that <laughs> yeah, you can you can make it you know? When you when you want to <laughs> learn about Uno platform, that's a Hello World application. Oh, for there you, you go. <laughs> I'm honestly even more excited about this after this. Dream. Yeah, that's good. Uh, actually, you can try it out right now without installing anything. There is playground.platform.uno that you can run in your browser, and it's pretty quick. And you can actually try Uno platform XAML in the browser. So mm. you have the uh, borders. You can write, uh, you can change, maybe I will change color here to red and run it. See, I changed the color of the border. <laughs> yeah, you can try it in the browser even without installing Visual Studio and everything else. You just, you can, you can uh, do a uh, try run in the browser, see if you, mm. if you like it and then uh, commit to it by installing the extension and so on. <laughs> well, I already know I like it. <laughs> Yeah, it actually has uh, data binding as well, so you can define JSON data and mm -hmm. show it in the in the in the view as well. So that's uh, playground dot uh, dot platform dot uno. That's uh, that's the website that you can try it out on. And uh, you can also get the Uno Gallery app, which is available on Google Play Store and Google App Store. So that's a showcase application of the features that Uno platform has. All right. And uh, I have a homework as well for everyone. <laughs> so uh, try to create an application with Uno platform. You know, go through the first Uno application tutorial that's available there and uh, see if you can, if you like it, if you can build things with it, with it and uh, definitely send feedback for us so that we can improve. Uno platform and uh, add new features because that's always fun. And uh, we definitely want user feedback to know what 
uh, what features you want to see, what are missing, and what's interesting for you specifically. So uh, go to GitHub and uh, file issues as needed. Plus, there is a tutorial on how to contribute to a platform. Uh, that's like free part tutorial on how to do your first pull request. So if you're interested, you can actually uh, add some code and add some uh, additional features yourself. That's cool. Your first uh, feedback will be darker, dark theme. <laughs> <laughs> Super dark. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. You can contribute with that. <laughs> like Batman. Batman. It could be called Batman. Mm -hmm. I like it. Oh. And you can use the font Gothic. Gotham. <laughs> Gotham. Yeah. Gotham. Twitter font, right? Yeah, it's a Twitter font. I don't think you are allowed to. <laughs> <laughs> That's Maybe. cool. I have one more thing I want to show you. Just realized that I didn't. And that's very sad. <laughs> uh, so I, have to, I have to fix that because it's super nice. So uh, should be this. Uno samples. Yeah. It's because we added in the last release, the 3.6 release, we added a feature called file pickers. And that's probably quite interesting to everyone who's building applications in general because you want to interact with files on local file system. And we actually now support file pickers in the browser as well. So mm. let's go here. Let's do this. This is a sample application that we use to develop features. So it's not like really uh, user friendly, but <laughs> it gets it's the job done. It's made by developers. For, by developers for developers. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I open here a pictures folder. Yeah. OK, so it's my pictures folder. I will open it in the browser. And let's see what happens when I, ooh, I will make it side by side. Uh, I will list items. You can see I can list items on my local mm -hmm. file system. So I can see what's what's there. But I can also create things like test.txt. Yeah, it's not there. So I'll create it. Yeah, save changes. And now there is this file, huh. text.txt. Huh. So I wrote to my local file system from the browser, which is something pretty cool because it's yeah, not, it is. not uploading, not downloading. It's really writing to the local file system. Yeah. And you can actually uh, write to the file. So if I pick the file here, I can uh, write hello world into that file. <laughs> and that file will now contain hello world. So it is super interactive, and it allows you to write things like uh, Notepad in the browser, uh, which <laughs> really writes to your local file system without downloading things and uploading things, which is pretty cool. That's cool. Yeah. I like and it. All, yeah, the, the file pickers <laughs> work everywhere. So Android, iOS, macOS, name it. Everywhere it works. So you just write your Windows application, and it works everywhere. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, so, I'm definitely going to do that homework now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely should. Uh, I have a draw, so you can fill out the presentation feedback uh, and win the introduction to Uno Platform course. So uh, on this link, you can uh, fill it out, and uh, three of you will win this course for free. Nice. So cool. And with that, that's all I have. So if you have any questions or uh, feedback, definitely ask. Awesome. This was fun. It was. Even more fun than I expected. <laughs> <laughs> you had quite high hopes, though. I did. Yeah. So that, that's, uh, that's good. I'm glad. That's one for, for you now. Got MIDI. I got Tyson. platforms. I got SAML. You got dark, dark theme. Dark, yeah. <laughs> He's picking up. Yep. <laughs> thank you so much for joining yeah, thank us. Thank you. It's really been a blast. It's been. And thank you for inviting me. And we will be back next week next on week? Thursday. Yes. And where is the mouse pointer? There it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, see you uh, in a week. Yeah.